recorded by Miss S. E. Waldo, a disciple. Monday, 1st July 1895 Shri Ramakrishna Deva Shri Ramakrishna was the son of a very orthodox Brahman who would refuse even a gift from any but a special caste of Brahmans, neither might he work, nor even be a priest in a temple, nor sell books, nor serve anyone. He could only have what fell from the sky's arms, and even then it must not come through a fallen Brahman. Temples have no hold on the Hindu religion, if they were all destroyed, religion would not be affected a grain. A man must only build a house for God and guests, to build for himself would be selfish, therefore he erects temples as dwelling places for God. Owing to the extreme poverty of his family, Sri Ramakrishna was obliged to become in his Bahuda priest in a temple dedicated to the Divine Mother, also called Prakriti or Kali, represented by a female figure standing with feet on a male figure, indicating that until Maya lifts, we can know nothing. Brahman is neuter, unknown and unknowable, but to be objectified he covers himself with a veil of Maya, becomes the mother of the universe, and so brings forth the creation. The prostrate figure, Shiva or God, has become Shava, dead or lifeless, by being covered by Maya. The Jnani says, I will uncover God by force, Advaitism, but the dualist says, I will uncover God by praying to Mother, begging her to open the door to which she alone has the key. The daily service of the Mother Kali gradually awakened such intense devotion in the heart of the young priest that he could no longer carry on the regular temple worship. So he abandoned his duties and retired to a small woodland in the temple compound where he gave himself up entirely to meditation. These woods were on the bank of the river Ganga, and one day the swift current bore to his very feet just the necessary materials to build him a little enclosure. In this enclosure he stayed and wept and prayed, taking no thought for the care of his body or for aught except his Divine Mother. A relative fed him once a day and watched over him. Later came a sannyasini or lady ascetic to help him find his mother. Whatever teachers he needed came to him unsought. From every sect some holy saint would come and offer to teach him and to each he listened eagerly. But he worshipped only mother, all to him was mother. Sri Ramakrishna never spoke a harsh word against anyone. So beautifully tolerant was he that every sect thought that he belonged to them. He loved everyone. To him all religions were true. He found a place for each one. He was free, but free in love, not in thunder. The mild type creates, the thundering type spreads. All was the thundering type to spread the light. And it has been said by many that Swami Vivekananda himself was a kind of Saint Paul to Sri Ramakrishna. The age of Saint Paul, however, is gone, we are to be the new lights for this day. A self-adjusting organization is the great need of our time. When we can get one, that will be the last religion of the world. The wheel must turn, and we should help it, not hinder. The waves of religious thought rise and fall, and on the topmost one stands the prophet of the period. Ramakrishna came to teach the religion of today, constructive, not destructive. He had to go afresh to nature to ask for facts, and he got scientific religion which never says belief, but see, I see, and you too can see. Use the same means, and you will reach the same vision. God will come to everyone, harmony is within the reach of all. Sri Ramakrishna's teachings are the gist of Hinduism, they were not peculiar to him. Nor did he claim that they were, he cared not for name or fame. He began to preach when he was about forty, but he never went out to do it. He waited for those who wanted his teachings to come to him. In accordance with Hindu custom, he was married by his parents in early youth to a little girl of five, 
who remained at home with her family in a distant village, unconscious of the great struggle through which her young husband was passing. When she reached maturity, he was already deeply absorbed in religious devotion. She travelled on foot from her home to the temple at Dakshineswar where he was then living, and as soon as she saw him, she recognised what he was, for she herself was a great soul, pure and holy, who only desired to help his work, never to drag him down to the level of the Grihastha, householder. Sri Ramakrishna is worshipped in India as one of the great incarnations, and his birthday is celebrated there as a religious festival. A curious round stone is the emblem of Vishnu, the omnipresent. Each morning a priest comes in, offers sacrifice to the idol, waves incense before it, then puts it to bed and apologizes to God for worshipping him in that way, because he can only conceive of him through an image or by means of some material object. He bathes the idol, clothes it, and puts his divine self into the idol to make it alive. There is a sect which says, it is weakness to worship only the good and beautiful, we ought also to love and worship the hideous and the evil. This sect prevails all over Tibet, and they have no marriage. In India proper they cannot exist openly, but organize secret societies. No decent men will belong to them except Sab Rosa. Thrice communism was tried in Tibet, and thrice it failed. They use tapas and with immense success as far as power is concerned. Tapas means literally to burn. It is a kind of penance to heat the higher nature. It is sometimes in the form of a sunrise to sunset vow, such as repeating Om all day incessantly. These actions will produce a certain power that you can convert into any form you wish, spiritual or material. This idea of tapas penetrates the whole of Hindu religion. The Hindus even say that God made tapas to create the world. It is a mental instrument with which to do everything. Everything in the three worlds can be caught by tapas. People who report about sects with which they are not in sympathy are both conscious and unconscious liars. A believer in one sect can rarely see truth in others. A great bhakta, Hanuman, once said when asked what day of the month it was, God is my eternal date, no other date I care for.